this outfit kind of makes me look like a hipster. Hey, review family, keep it I keep it tight. My name is Jay Moore, serve you guy, and I'm back again to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be covering the new Solange Knowles album entitled When I Get Home. So Solange Noel, singer-songwriter, she is the sister of Beyonce Noel's, this is her fourth studio-length album, and the follow-up to her 2016 album, A Seat at the Table. So I just want to get this out of the way and say this is a very strangely conflicting album for me, and it really took quite a few listens for me to fully wrap my head around enough to formulate my review of it. This is a conceptual album for the most part, and it focuses on her hometown of Houston, Texas. It's 19 tracks, almost 39 minutes, and one thing that caught me off guard right off the bat is how lo-fi some of this production on this album is, especially in the instrumentals, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think that the atmosphere on a lot of these tracks really do hold up well, and they hold a lot of passion, especially compared with Solange's voice, but when you look at the production credits, when you look at who helped produce this album while it was being made, people like Pharrell Williams, Williams, people like uh, Earl Sweatshirt, people like Tyler the Creator, people like Metro Boomin, also Standing on the Corner and Panda Bear I believe was on this, as well as the vocal features that pop up on this album. It really is a big project and a lot of people were involved with it, but with all of that considered, this album still has an aesthetic that, to me at least, with a lot of these instrumentals and her vocals seem a little bit stripped back for having all of these producers, all of these guest features, all of this build up to this album, they still feel a little bare bones. And that's not necessarily a bad thing when she's going for some more simplistic, more relatable topics with some really nice vocal performances alongside these dreamy R&B, funk, and jazz instrumentals. She pulls in a lot of influence into this massive pull from smooth, stylish jazz to snap your finger, bop your head funk to some really dreamy aesthetics and atmospheric R&B music and alternative R&B to some trap inspiration with some hi-hats here and there and some nice, deep, just intrinsic type of beats with trap influence. This is one of the best R&B albums that I have heard in a while, and that is saying something. It's not as good as that Kalani album, because I have literally been fawning over that Kalani album ever since I did my review of that. I will stand by that. That is a freaking amazing album. Please go listen to that album and watch my review if you want. Solange consistently comes through with an extremely nice vocal performance, but like I said, for the most part, it's very stripped back when it comes to the production. There are not many effects on it. There's not much uh, special little effects thrown on top of the vocals. The most you're getting are harmonizations with backup vocals layered together with her vocals or just layered vocals in general or interesting backup vocals coming in as she is singing, and it's usually just for harmonious sake, and they usually come off very well. They usually add to the track and it's nothing to really write home about. It's nothing that experimental. It's nothing that forward thinking or groundbreaking, but it does sound nice when you're listening to that specific track that it pops up on. Her vocals, for me at least, come off very passionate. I do enjoy her regular kind of deeper singing voice. It usually comes off as very empowered, very confident, but also at the same time a little bit vulnerable and very um, kind of passionate with what she's trying to say in her lyricism. I do enjoy her falsetto as well. It's very smooth. It's silky. It sounds really nice going shoulder to shoulder with these beats, but at the same time, um, I wouldn't say that her vocal performance is anything that is really sweeping me off my feet, but for this type of sounding album, I think that she does come off very well. In other words, if I'm not really getting my point across, it's nothing underwhelming, but it's not really anything overwhelming. There are some really amazing alternative R&B and jazz tracks like Down With The Click, which features some a little bit of vocal performance by Tyler, the creator, and he also does the keyboards on this track. I love the shimmering aesthetic of this track with the pianos going shoulder to shoulder with this beautiful just jazz instrumental, and Solange's vocals are layered. They're all over the place. She's singing very beautifully. She's going all over in her pitch and tone, but staying very consistently pretty and gorgeous, and alongside this instrumentation, it makes it really an amazing song to behold. This album, uh, this album also has quite a lot of intermissions and interludes, which usually we'll consider some uh, spoken word bits or a little bit of a skit. Usually it has some kind of experimental uh, sound play or something being spliced together, sound clips put together and all that, but uh, most of the time I'm not a big fan of interludes and intermissions, uh, but for some reason it just 
works on this album. I think that they break up a lot of the sounds that you're getting and kind of really do add some more context, even though it is vague, even though it's hard to discern. I do like the intermissions and I do like the interludes and I don't think they break up the album in a bad way. I don't think they take away from the album. I think they only add to it. Is it just for streams? It might be, but I don't think they're just here for no reason. I do enjoy them. I do enjoy the little spoken word bits and I find them very endearing a lot of times. One of the main gripes that I have with this album is the fact that some of these tracks can feel like they should have been fleshed out more, like they are an idea of a track. Uh, keep in mind Things I Imagine, the first track that opens up the album. Yes, it's very short. I don't even think it breaches the two minute mark, but it is so bare bones with her just repeating this refrain. Uh, it goes through a couple little pitch changes and it's nice and it has this nice instrumental to it. It's very atmospheric, but it gets very monotonous and very tedious very quickly. Same with the track Dreams. It's not that long either, but at the same time, I love the atmosphere to this track. I love the instrumental that's backing it. It is super glistening. It has some nice jazzy instrumentation to it, but the refrains and it just seems like almost a demo. It seems like an idea of a song. It seems like there could have been more done to it. And it's not me saying I dislike this track or any of the tracks. It's me saying I like these tracks. I just wish they did more. But like I cannot help but just get behind this funky, jazzy, spaced out beat on way to the show track number four is that Ugh, it's so sticky and that's something I feel about a lot of this album it's infectious it's earwormy it's gonna get in your ear and it's gonna stick in there for a while I have really been enjoying this album overall and her vocal performance it just it goes so well with this instrumentation is it simple is it like, yeah, it is. Is it groundbreaking? No, but does it go together with this instrumentation? It really does. Loving the lyricism on Stay Flow, which has this kind of mix of kind of funky jazz instrumentation with some trap sounding, and it sees Solange coming through with some colder lyrics almost, a little bit of a more badass type of tone to her voice, a lot less uh, vulnerable and a lot more confident, but it's still keeping that down to low vibey aesthetic and this whole album is a vibe. It's really easy to get behind a lot of these tracks and vibe with them and get in her shoes and understand what she's either singing about or semi-rapping about or crooning over and it, it sounds nice because they're made that way. They're made with such uh, like so many great producers that it's hard not to get behind them. Sometimes I can be a little distracted by how sometimes bare bones these uh, instrumentals and her vocal performance are when they go toe to toe considering how they can be a little lo-fi and I sometimes wish there was a little bit more going on because I know that with these producers in mind and with Solange's great vocal cords, it makes me wish there was sometimes more going on in these compositions. But that's literally just apples and oranges at this point, and I really enjoyed this album from pretty much top to bottom, but there are some glaring things that are like, I wish this was better here, I wish this track was more fleshed out, I wish the production was a little better here, but overall this is definitely an alternative R&B, a funk, a jazz album that is definitely worth your time, and if you like Solange or any of the things that I've said in this video, or you're a fan of one of these genres, definitely check it out. Definitely see if you like it. And yeah, I myself am going to be giving this album a 7 out of 10. And that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You can go check out my Kalani review that I have did recently, and I'll probably link the Ariana Grande review that I did recently as well. And all of that good stuff, smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. And yeah, I think that's it. I'll talk to you guys next time. But until then, my name is Jay Morse, Review Guy, and I'm signing off saying farewell.